I'd like to call this meeting to order. Will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Becker. I'm here. Mr. Carangelo. Mrs. Chu. Here. Mr. Sismar. Here. Mrs. Gloss. Here. Mr. Hong. Mrs. Reese. Here. Mr. Winston. Here. And President Lax. Here. We have a quorum. Please rise to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The New Jersey P Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend meetings of public bodies at which business affecting their interest is discussed and acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the East Brunswick Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Board of Education offices. Written notice was also provided to the Sentinel, the Newark Star-Ledger, the Home News and Tribune, and the Municipal Clerk of East Brunswick. All Board of Education meetings, with the exception of executive sessions, are videotaped I'm upside down, for later broadcast. It is the policy of the Board of Education that videotaped meetings are not edited for any purpose. Individuals who speak at the Board's public meetings should be aware of these videotaping rules. Good evening, and we're going to start with our superintendent's report. Thank you, President Lax, and good evening, everyone. And I'm doing dual duty tonight, so uh, I hope it all goes well. The artwork in the boardroom this evening reflects the efforts of talented students at Bound Monroe Elementary School. Their teacher is Erica Goldberg. Kristen Gristina is the interim principal. Did you ever dream about being in charge of your school? Chittick's third grader, Malik Mashley, did. He won the PTA raffle for principal for a day and spent the day with principal Christine Shea. There we go. The Hammersholt Physical Education Department hosted a volleyball tournament in March for the sixth and seventh grade students. The tournament was a culmination of a three week long volleyball unit. During this time, students learned skills and rules needed to participate in regular season games. The teams with the top record from each class period were invited to play the volleyball tournament of champions. The students showed excitement and exemplary uh, sportsmanship. On Monday, March 21st, the district held the 13th annual Night of Jazz concert. This event is co-sponsored by the EBEF and the Mario A. DeCarolis Memorial Music Fund. The evening featured performances by the Hammersholt Churchill and High School Ensembles, along with the High School Jazz Choir, and a special performance by One More, Once Big Band. Students from each of the schools had the chance to sit in and play alongside professional jazz musicians. To be afforded the opportunity to play with this group of high caliber was an amazing experience for these students. The high school math team participated in its seventh Central Jersey Mathematics Competition on Wednesday, March 23rd at Perth Amboy High School. Students from an assembly of schools gathered to compete in a set of 10 advanced math questions. The East Brunswick Varsity's team took home first place. Wow. Not a surprise, and congratulations to them. I had the pleasure of attending the National Honor Society induction ceremony on Tuesday, March 29th, along with Board President Lori Lax and Board Vice President Heather Gloss. And they were there as parents whose children were recipients as well, so congratulations to them. The National Honor Society inducted 181 new members. These students have earned their membership to this prestigious organization by demonstrating commitment to the NHS pillars of character, leadership, scholarship, and service. After a two-year break, the sixth graders were finally able to return to Fairview Lakes YMCA camp. The teacher coordinators did an outstanding job organizing the trip so students could enjoy all of the memorable experiences, including boating, the ridge hike, archery, campfire, and the ASE outdoor obstacle course. These activities provide a unique experience that will allow students to make tangible connections to the middle school curriculum. The ridge hike included information about geology and ecology, but also about social studies topics such as eminent domain. 
Archery and boating, while fun, provided connections to physics, and the ASC course that requires teamwork reinforced critical communication skills. I would like to thank the staff at Fairview and our EB team for making the trip a success. The coordinators devoted countless hours to reformatting the trip to be a one-day event by organizing activities to maximize the safety and experience for all students. On Wednesday, April 6th, the High School Counseling Department, in partnership with the EBEA Pride Committee, hosted a college and career fair. Over 70 different colleges, trade schools, military branches, and first responders were present to provide students and families with information and resources regarding post-secondary options for students. Attendees received a complimentary tote bag along with refreshments, and one lucky winner walked away with a free beach-themed raffle basket. The fair was extremely well attended and informative for all. Our GMC Sportsmanship Award winners are Mackenzie Kane and for bowling and John Franco de Guida for football and boys lacrosse. Our NJSIAA Scholar Athlete is Carson He for boys tennis. Congratulations to our March High School Athletes of the Month. Students were selected for this honor by the coaching staff based on performance, demonstration of leadership, effort in practice, and of course for modeling exceptional character. Spring sports season is underway and we look forward to having a great season. This evening, the township is hosting an event at the Community Arts Center. Welcome to the township of East Brunswick for new residents. Janet Angeline and Karen Mandler from my office are representing East Brunswick Public Schools tonight at this event and will share information about the district and how, how new families can register their children. And by the way, registration is on the rise in East Brunswick schools. Just a reminder, schools will be closed Monday, April 11th through Monday, April 18th. I wish everyone an enjoyable spring break. Schools will reopen on Tuesday, April 19th. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Valeski. I want to start singing the Rutgers fight song now, <laughs> just to give you the introduction, the are you rah rah. <laughs> So everyone notices um, Laura's attire this evening. Look, very exciting. She's representing. Yeah. All right, the floor is yours. Um, just to address that, I did officially enroll at the Rutgers Business School for this uh, for college. <laughs> um, so this is the first spring, like normal spring, that we've had in three or so years. So we've got a lot going on. Uh, like Dr. Valeski had said, spring sports are well underway. We started off our first games these past couple weeks, and we have our last round of senior nights for this year coming up after spring break. And just a little plug, the girls lacrosse team will be having a car wash on April 23rd, 9 to 1 at the high school, and will do a wonderful job. It's, I believe it's 5 or $7, I'm not sure which. <laughs> uh, last Wednesday, Choir and Tri-M hosted a coffee house and the Tri-M students brought baked goods that I heard were pretty popular. Uh, last Friday, Anime Club Smash Bros Tournament and the Language so Honor Society Masquerade Balls were a great uh, big hit. They were super well received and I was heard they were a lot of fun. Dr. Valesi mentioned the College and Career Fair, which is a great opportunity for parents and students to learn about their next steps. Right now, Mr. Winston's daughter is at the IPL 1 competition, or at Rutgers Model United Nations with IPL 1. And in two weeks, the AP IPL team competes in their national competition virtually. And April ends after spring break with Asian Club's Asian Night on the 22nd, Folio's Gallery Night on the 28th, and the Senior Variety Show on the 29th. And as I said before, this is an exciting time for seniors. Decision Day is coming up on May 1st and we'll be having a uh, Decision Day event at the high school on April 29th. Uh, students are getting in their last rounds of college visits before they make their final commitments, and we're looking forward to the end of the year se senior events. Uh, spring break is eagerly anticipated, and we're looking for a, <laughs> a revitalizing break and happy holidays when we come back for AP exams. Uh, see, it was going so well. <laughs> Now I know why I'm tired since I was at so many of these events over the past uh, week. Thank you, Nora. We appreciate that. Okay. 
The Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. To protect the privacy of all students and staff, concerns regarding individual students and staff members should generally be addressed by first meeting with the appropriate staff. Uh, participant is limited to three minutes duration. Elapsed time will be determined through the use of a timing device operated by our board secretary. Is there anyone wishing to speak to the board this evening? Come on up. If you could state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Kelly Kelleher. I live at 94 Independence Drive. Well, once you're at the microphone. Please. Oh, sorry. Kelly Hello. Kelleher, 94 mm -hmm. Independence Drive. Um, I came here tonight to speak to the on the board's decision to adopt a new sex ed and LGBTQ curriculum um, starting this fall for grades K through 12. I currently have two children in the school system with another starting kindergarten in September. Um, I've been taught from a young age, both in school and at home, that we are to treat others uh, in the way that we wish to be treated. This statement has held up over generations and remains true today. However, as our district aims to be fully inclusive, we're only moving further from that. As we begin to highlight specific beliefs and ideologies um, with an attempt to achieve inclusivity, we are simultane simultaneously beginning to exclude many others. This is a never ending cycle. While preparing for what to say this evening, I considered listing many of the deeply disturbing topics I came across while reading through the state proposed lesson plans. I considered going on about how disgusted and devastated I am devastated I am that any conscious-minded adult would ever find these topics remotely appropriate for a child. And believe me when I say, I am. We're not talking about math or literacy here. We're talking about twisting the education of science and fact into the instruction of controversial ideas based on emotion and feeling um, with no founding in science or fact. I also then considered that while I may feel this way, another parent could have strikingly different viewpoints. Um, I may not agree with the opinion of this parent, however, um, I do respect their right to have their own opinion as I would like mine respected. I would respect their right to choose the way in which they feel it is best to raise their child as I would like my parenting choices equally respected. With that in mind, the only way for the schools to respect everyone's individual rights and beliefs is to remain neutral. Allow everyone the choice and the freedom to discuss and teach whatever, whenever they deem appropriate within the privacy of their own lives. I, as I understand it, parents will have the option to protect, to protect their beliefs by opting out of such discussion, thereby excluding their child from class lesson. This does not, however, prevent teachers from implementing their ideas within other lesson plans, nor does it protect them from discussions amongst peers at recess, gym class, or lunch. Who's to prevent children from repeating these things to one another outside of the guided lesson? With these topics, or while these topics are very much a part of the real world in which they will all grow up to face, um, it is not up to the governor, legislators, board of education, or individual teacher to determine when or how to discuss such things. This is a parent's right and a parent's right alone, no one else's. We live in a time where protecting the minds of our children has never been more difficult. It's becoming increasingly strenuous to keep our children, children. Schools are supposed to be a safe and neutral, trusted, place, uh, trusted space. As a parent in this community, I fear that this is slipping away. In a survey last week, we were asked our opinion on the naming of the current middle school. It's overwhelmingly evident that you possess the resources and ability to reach out to the community for their input. So I ask all of you, is this really where our opinions matter most? Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Is there anyone else? Come on up. And if you'll start with your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Alex Spielman, Six Douglas Road. Um, I just wanted to piggyback on um, the fine lady's uh, comments about the LGB inclusive curriculum that has been passed by the uh, state legislature and signed by the governor back in 2020 and was gonna be implemented that school year. Um, I understand that that was supposed to be done that year, but because of the COVID pandemic, we were not doing such things in the way capacity was supposed to do as in a full classroom, but as in, in digital. Uh, and that in 2022, 2023 is when it's gonna be done in classrooms. Um, I strongly oppose that as I believe a lot of that stuff should be that the hand of the parents' decision to do so. I understand there are op options for these things, but the problem I have is that this is not just a regular health class type of topic. 
Uh, these things are wide ranging as this also touches things such as language arts, mathematics, history, science, amongst other, other uh, subjects. Um, if this was just your regular health education, sex ed stuff that you would learn when I was there, at least in uh, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, um, no problem. You would have that waiver in the beginning of the year, your parents could sign it, and there you go, in a story. But the fact that you're doing this across the curriculum, and this is going to be affecting every student um, in more than one subject, especially core subjects, which are mandatory for graduation, um, we will be putting uh, parents and students in a very, very difficult position where they're going to either uh, include beliefs that they do not personally uh, believe or understand or sacrifice their academic excellence into future career and other uh, pathways. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Is there anyone else that would like to speak before the board? Seeing none, I will close the public portion. Can I ask a question about the public portion afterwards? Have, have we seen this curriculum? Because uh, I would have some concerns too. I've not seen any uh, curriculum from the state or anything like that. Um, I don't know if any other board members have. Um, and if it's starting in kindergarten, have, have, we, do we, have we received as a district any curriculum? We, there, Mr. Sismar, there was recommended curriculum from the state. That does not mean that the curriculum that we adopt is going to be exactly like that. When can we anticipate seeing that curriculum? Dr. Bowley, do you know? Our curriculum is aligned with the New Jersey Student Learning Standards. That wasn't my question. When, my question is when can we see it? The curriculum that we're going to use for the 2022-23 school year we as a result get, of this. Our, we can get that. Would it be appropriate to have a, a, a Absolutely. Have a we, could have a, we could have a treat, okay. a retreat, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll get a presentation on that. Yeah. One. Thank you. You're welcome. Before I ask for a motion this evening to move the agenda, is there any item that anyone needs separated out? Yes. Yes. Uh, under the financial services area. I'm still upside down. Number, uh, um, the copy that was upside down. Take your time. Yeah, I have the same thing. Uh, <laughs> that was an interesting layout on the printing job today. Thank you. It was fun. Um, uh, sec uh, number three. I'm sorry, which one? Number three. Here? Number three, financial services. Okay, do we do that first or do we do the agenda then that we'll one? We'll do the agenda and then come back to that. Do you need something separate as well, Mike? Just a question for clarification. Is new and old business separate? After. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. <clears throat> okay, may I please have a motion for tonight's agenda with the exception of number three on the financial services? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Becker, second, second. by Mr. Sismar. Any discussion? This is Reese, yes. Uh, number five, contract award for uh, student instruments. So just maybe you could explain, because I know we use Music Shop, but I see there's another place we're using in Maryland. So like, how would they get their instruments and stuff like that? It would be shipped to them, or how does that work? What's that this is uh, a five. five in the beginning part. Um, I'm not saying the right term. Hold on. And the uh, policy, is that? Yeah. Curriculum and No, it's under no, finance. finance. It's a contract financial award. Services, yeah, okay. Um, okay. I'll have to get back to you on that because I don't have the details with me on that on yeah. the contract award. Yeah, my question be, is basically because, you know, I, I, I'm familiar with, you know, the rental and stuff from my kids, and, and Music Shop is up in Booton, right. and they're very reliable, and they're New Jersey, right? So I was just curious, and then the prices aren't that very different for the other place. So maybe we could, I don't know, is there an effort to find a local place? Just to, just to well, they have to meet the criteria and the specifications. Okay. So this went through a formal review process, a formal uh, request for proposals process to assess uh, the uh, submissions of proposals. And uh, this was the result of that assessment. Okay. And do we check with like you know, the music teachers, that this is good for them, or is it, that doesn't that, that, that does not have, okay. it does not play into the uh, yeah, assessment process. The with that. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you for explaining. This time. See, when I reviewed the I revised uh, budget, I see a significant increase for the student transportation. Does this increase reflect the gasoline cost or other costs? Or just in a moment? Um, 
Mr. Hong, which, which uh, item are you referring to? So on this uh, agenda, agenda item number six, uh, financial service, and the page number one, the so student transportation cost increase, one is 14,000, another one is 8,300. And on the uh, page number three, the student transportation other, this looks like the, the 23,000 something. So is this the, because of the fuel cost increase or the insurance cost increase or what is this? Why this is the increase? Uh, these are, this is um, related to, I, I'm looking specifically at those. So uh, these are uh, uh, budgetary transfers between transportation accounts. So this is to um, basically categorize the funds into the appropriate category. So for example, um, we have to categorize uh, transportation costs as regular transportation versus special education transportation, uh, and then also further categorize between those services provided by the Educational Services Commission. So there's a lot of variation in terms of where those services are provided. So if the services are to be charged to an account where there are insufficient funds. We have to transfer from one of the other transportation accounts. Okay, thank okay. you. I have another question. Uh, still the financial service, agenda item 11. So this amended application to the grant, uh, Sarah and uh, Isar. Yes. So will this uh, amendment will impact our um, the chance to be approved? No. No, okay. No, so this does not impact the chance to, uh, to be any, to have for any approval on these. Um, uh, this amendment is a result of what the Department of Education came back with its review and just asked that we need to recategorize uh, one of the items. So do you have a timeline uh, when we can get a result from this application? When we get the result? Yes. Oh, which, it's already resolved. Oh, okay. Yes. If this is more or less a formality. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. No more questions. Any questions? Any other questions? <coughs> this is Chip. Um, I have two. One is on curriculum and instruction item two. It's the credit hour change on the um, calculus, AP calculus class. So, as I understand it, it is um, extra extra classes in Q3. So how does that work in the student schedule? So I presume that'll start next year in 22-23. And so how does that work in the student schedule? So suddenly in Q3, they're gonna have five, five days a week. Like, how, will, will that affect other scheduling of, of yes, coordination? Yes, it'll be worked out on an individualized basis, but they'll be taking it from their PE minutes they've exceeded the PE minutes required for graduation. Okay, so the, so okay, it'll come from PE at, just for mm -hmm. that quarter. Correct. Okay, thank you. And then the other question was on, sorry, staff development item one. So I just wanted to clarify, like in the agenda, it didn't specify, it said to approve the contract and typically we'll say how much is the contract so in the support documentation, it does specify the, the cost of the development is 46300 mm -hmm. but then there's additional services offered by the vendor. So my question was just, are we approving the, the base training, which is described in the agenda, or are we also approving the additional services, which is not described in the agenda? The, I believe it's just the base contract with Teachers College. The additional services were on there a la carte. Okay, and so what we're approving tonight is just the base. Correct, if we choose to proceed with okay. any of the- Okay, I just wanted to have that clarified. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I would like you all to take note that on October 27th, the Marine uh, President's Own United States Marine Band is coming back to town. Right. Um, I know there weren't a lot of us that were on the board the last time it was here, um, but, and for everyone out there, it's well worth seeing. Um, so I just want to make sure everyone, yes. Can I make a uh, comment? Sure. Yes. Uh, 
So this world is changing very fast. We don't know what the future job is. Nobody can anticipate. Nobody can uh, estimate. So in order to prepare our students, then we have to keep changing our course, changing the title, adding new uh, contents. For this regard, I want to thank Dr. Boli and her uh, curricular committee for the great job. So each time they keep adding uh, the new content, adding new class, as the uh, chairperson for that committee, I always ask question, why, you want, why do you want to do this? What's the benefit and how this change will benefit our students? For this regard, I really appreciate your having my title. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Becker. Yes, except on item number one on the Board of Education minutes, March 17th, I abstain. Noted. <clears throat> Mrs. Chu. Yes. Mr. Sismar. Yes. Mrs. Guas. Yes. Mr. Hong. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. Mr. Winston. Yes. President Lax. Yes, motion carries. May I now please have a motion for item number three on the financial services? So moved by Mrs. Becker. Second. Second by Mr. Hong. Is there any <clears throat> discussion? Yes. I didn't realize so much discussion could happen on a moved agenda prior to this, or I would never remove that one. I just want to point that out, so I apologize <laughs> for the inconvenience. No problem. Um, my question regarding under uh, the bill payments. Tell me a little bit about what, I'm going to try my best here, Parit Somjan Architects LLC is doing uh, for us right now. Uh, they're working on various projects. So um, most recently, the board approved uh, the uh, planning for a new high school. Um, they're also uh, working on uh, window and door replacement projects throughout the district. Um, oh, RTU replacements, rooftop unit replacements. High school. Uh, that's at the high school at Hammersholt. Um, no, they're not involved in that. Um, those are the ones immediately coming to mind. I appreciate that. And I suspect that it was probably for the high school. So I am going to reiterate once again on a third request that we initiate a committee on this board for oversight of the construction or anything involving the high school at this time as it's going through this critical transition. And I do a call upon the board president to fulfill the, the promise that you made in the first meeting to set that up. And I think it's time for spending $70,000. Uh, at this point, and I know it's going to go exceptionally higher. Yes, and that is in the works, Jeff. Thank you. You're very welcome. Any other discussion? All in favor? Oh, is this a roll call? No, this is Okay, not. oh, sorry, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Bringing us to new and or old business and committee reports for the board and the good of the cause. So there is an action item. Wait, there is an action item. On the old business. Okay, we'll do that first then. Would you like to tell me what it is? <laughs> uh, that is on the um, school renaming. Oh, I'm so sorry to my hammer soul peeps, I forgot that. Okay, um, on the days you should see the school renaming, May I please have a motion for item number one, school renaming Hammerschild Upper Elementary School. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Becker. Second. Second by Mrs. Reese. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for putting the poll out. I mean, 52 percent, albeit slim, uh, is uh, certainly a victory. A win's a win. So uh, with the renaming. That said, in a Shakespearean way, a rose by any other name, I understand there's going to be a name change. I still believe this board needs to hear more about what the structure now will be. Um, I'm particularly concerned about, I'm not going to use word, well, I'm not going to use any words to describe, but this, the uh, sixth grade treatment it will now change from what it's traditionally mm -hmm. been as, it's been as it was once uh, past described by Dr. Boley. And I am not uh, satisfied with that yet. So, but. Mr. Winston, um, I believe as we talked earlier about the curriculum and having a retreat, maybe we can incorporate uh, an overview of that look uh, in that same evening. I'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Mr. Sismar. 
I, I have a lot more to say and a lot of questions. Um, my first point that I want to make uh, administratively to have orientation meetings with parents, to send out emails and such, and I'll leave it at that, to be already calling it Hammersholt Upper Elementary School without board approval, to me, I have some concerns. Maybe some people think it's a minor point, but until things are presented to us and told to us, I, I, don't, I don't think the district should go out there and, and advertise changes that have not yet been approved to the district. That's my personal opinion on that. The survey, uh, it, Mr. Winston said a slim margin. Again, I, uh, the concern I have with only 52.2%, and thank you to the 3,700 parents that responded, um, but the one question was, which name do you want? Hammersholt Upper Elementary or Hammersholt Middle School? I don't think the parents have been told, uh, and maybe we can get a little more color on this tonight before the retreat. What's the reason or the need to change the whole school to an elementary school model from a middle school? So I'll start with that's the first question. What, what, what would be the need? Because it's not just a name change. They're changing the whole structure. And I, I just basically found that out last meeting a couple weeks ago. So let's start with that one. What's the reason or need to change it back to an elementary school model? Mr. Sismar, if, um, uh, let me take you back. Um, this is probably before the pandemic, we had conversations and probably maybe back to 2015 is when this really started. Uh, and it went to, and you know, the board had conversations at the last meeting. And this is the, um, and we can provide documentation for all of you. This is the community feedback from the strategic planning process we had at Hammershold. We did all the post-it notes and this is all the data collected from that, broken down by category. Uh, and from that, we determined that some of the concerns of parents were the transition from our traditional elementary model, K-5, to Hammersholt 6-7. That, that critical move from fifth grade to sixth grade, parents reported that their children had difficulty. We began, we began investigating what was going on in elementary schools and what was going on at Hammersholt Middle School during that period of time. And there were, there were a variety of things that were going on in terms of the rigor at fifth grade, and in terms of the indoctrination at sixth grade. Uh, coming in fifth grade, there was a chance to actually add more rigor and prepare students for that transition. And in sixth grade, there was actually um, expectation when you walked in the door, after about a week's worth of time, you were expected to behave as a middle schooler, and that was a tough transition for some students. So we began exploring what we could do to ease the transition. Um, and then as we started looking and talking at a variety of uh, school board retreats about our expansion of um, enrollment, uh, the report from the demographic study in 2019 that said we were going to increase by the equivalent of one elementary school. That was an opportunity to look at how we restructure and how we redisperse our students. Uh, we came to the board with a plan to add the TCUs at Churchill uh, and then take and reconfigure the grades, then K-4 and then 5-6 Hammerschild. Uh, we began looking at different uh, <clears throat> uh, structures, and, and then there is, there is an actual elementary concept and an upper elementary concept, which we believe this fits very well. Um, I believe more clarity needs to be given the board about what the expectations of the fifth graders and sixth graders will be. Uh, they are and will be very independent people once they get into the building, but that is yet to be seen. But, but if you walk into any element, elementary school, the fifth graders, typically know their way around the building. They don't need to be escorted. They, they move around and, and we monitor them, but they don't require somebody to be by their side all the time. Um, but this gives a chance for this transition to slow down and elongate just a little bit at fifth and sixth grade, give our students a little more exposure to some electives and understand what they want to pursue. Um, and I think it's an actual really important growth period of time for our students. And then, of course, moving up to Churchill is going to be that next level up again. Um, but I think this, this platform will allow our students to have that, transform, that transformation over two years to prepare them for what will be the seventh grade experience at Churchill. So it really became an issue um, addressing community uh, concerns and then being able to do this within the structure that we had, if that makes any more sense. 
some of it. Um, I, I mean, my concerns were, and I was at a lot of the meetings, the original proposals for restructuring were all about capacity. Right. Um, there was even, uh, I could speak about proposals, because now we're, we're adding in things like the kids adjusting to the school and this and that. If, and this might sound a little harsh, but if the kids were, if we knew seven years ago, because that's what they were told, the data was here before I was on the board, that the kids were having trouble transitioning into Hammershold, which I didn't see on a daily basis for five years, as an anecdotal example, it, what would take seven years to implement that change? I mean, this change, if it was based on that, we could have moved. The only thing that, that I heard for several years was the size of the classes, the size of the classrooms. These other things about social and emotional issues were never brought up. Um, so I, 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 I kind of find that hard to believe that that's one of the major driving forces that we use data from seven years ago. Because I think it, if that is the case, should have been implemented a long time ago. Going forward, I have concerns with math, um, especially in the sixth grade. Our, our, we know our standardized math scores are down. Sixth grade is a testing year. Um, and currently, our Hammershold Middle School teachers, they specialize in math only. That's what they've been teaching. And our, our teachers are fantastic. <clears throat> so is, is part of the plan for the district now, because um, we want to increase the proficiency in our standardized test. Are the sixth graders going back to an elementary school teaching model where they would have like one teacher that teaches math and science and then another teacher that teaches like ILA and social studies? Yes. That answer is yes. Okay. So then are we now assigning teachers? And trust me, <laughs> Dr. Zambicki's back there. She knows how much I praise our staff. Um, so then I see us taking teachers that have never taught math before. We have a brand new math program coming in, and our scores are down. They're not as proficient as they were in math. It, to me, and this is my opinion, is that the best plan to get our sixth graders up to speed in math? Because we're taking teachers, like I said, the teachers used to specialize in math only. And now we're going to be taking, I don't know if somebody taught science, and you're going to have to teach them how to take math. Um, what training and backing are we going to provide for our can teachers? I, can I interrupt you and just ask a clarifying question? Because to, to my knowledge, we voted on the restructuring, and now we're voting on the name change. Is that correct? I understand. I'm not taking away from your questions. No, and I'll still ask them. Okay. No, no, no. I'm just saying, is that correct that we've, we've done this? Because I know we had the presentations yes. on this. And, the, and, <clears throat> yes. and my so, first part of what I said, and that's why I prefaced it with, every time we talked about restructuring, we only talked about capacity. Oh, no, no, we absolutely. never talked about social and emotional issues. We never talked about taking teachers that have never taught a, an important subject matter. And, and, you know, I'll add COVID in there. We're coming out of COVID, and now we're going to take teachers, and again, I say it, the best that I've seen, and try to, try to bring our sixth graders back into an elementary school model. In my opinion, that's, that's not something that's going to serve. I mean, in the future, I may be proven wrong, but... You know, we're, we, ha we, have, we have issues with our standardized math scores. We have issues with our math. We had to change our math because everyday math was failing. I, you know, there's other questions too. I'll go to, I'll go to some of my other questions. Currently in uh, fifth grade, we have reading and math specialists. Kids get pulled out or a math specialist, reading specialist pull, pushes in. Is that going to continue in fifth and sixth grade now or is yes. that something... Okay, so are we adding specialists? No, we have specialists at Hammershill currently. How many? Three of each. So we have three, three of each, and again, we're in a, we're in a middle school model. Yeah, I, I apologize. I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I just, we, we, we had this, we already voted on that, so I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of the fact because I, I have no problem. You can always express your opinions. I just want to make sure that you're aware of the fact. That I'm aware. Were, I'll just, we were I'll, already I'll, presented with this, but, and you voted on this. Right? But I'll still ask the questions, because That's, we were never given all the information about what grade restructuring meant. You can't, you can't when, you, when, you, when we sit up here and we're presented with information about grade restructuring, and the only information we're given is about capacity, of course it makes common sense. 
one of the things you said was with the social emotional issues of fifth and sixth graders now being up there. Well, an original proposal was to put fifth, sixth, and seventh at Churchill and the eighth and ninth graders at Hammershall. So that takes the social and emotional and, and, and fear of children going into a school because we were going to move three. So that's something that was added on. To me, it, it feels like revisionist history. You can't sit here and tell me that, you know, about the capacity. And believe me, I, I see the capacity. I understand it. Our class sizes went down. We just went over it in the budget. But then afterwards, and it was just when the name change came along, that I found out, and other board members, chime in. Please, please tell me how many times we, we've talked about social and emotional issues for ch children going into Hammershall. How many times have we talked about some of these other issues, especially when you were going to put three grade levels in Churchill? When have we talked about all these things? Yes, we voted on rate grade restructuring, but you guys feel free to comment on it. If, Mrs. If, Becker? If, if I could really quickly, because I, I feel like I need to set the stage, and obviously people had different opinions. We started this discussion based on collecting this information in 2000, well, this is actually accumulated in 2016. Uh, so, Mr. Zismar, to your point, we did know that parents had this concern, and we be began investigating, and we did start doing things during that time, over this period of time, to try to minimize the transitional period between fifth and sixth grade. Those were, uh, you know, things we were doing at both elementary school and at Hammershall. Uh, but when we had the demographer's report, to your point, which is exactly right, the catalyst for the change was our capacity. We did not have capacity in our elementary schools. But when we started looking at that, we went back to this document and w how can the solution accomplish both the capacity and some of the elements in here? So that's really where the it came together as this upper elementary model in seventh, eighth, and ninth grade at, at uh, Churchill. So with that, I just wanted to you know clarify my position or my my view of the world on that. I got you. Well, we seem to have a lot of excitement, so we're going to go with Mrs. Becker, Mrs. Reese. Did you have your hand up as well? And then Mr. Winston will be right down the line. Thank you. Um, a few comments as I've been taking notes during your very articulate. Um, articulation of your issues mark I'm so I missed the last board meeting um, but I feel like I I really missed something because I see before me voting a roll call vote on the school renaming and mark is bringing up a lot of issues with um, curriculum and environment and culture so I'm not, I'm just a little confused on what we're voting on. We are voting on the name change, but you wanted to bring up these issues because of the subject of Hammershell. Do I have that correct? Yeah, I don't think, and again, this getting into the weeds a little bit here, I don't think you can change a whole, somebody can correct me on this one too, a whole model of teaching a school, still call it a middle school, but then treat it as an elementary school teaching model. Maybe with the, with the staff things, maybe there's some crash little things I don't know about, but do you understand what I'm saying? Like this, this was almost like the last piece that was added to the puzzle. And I, I guess to, to, to answer your question, if we all said no, does this still go forward as an elementary school being called a middle school? I mean, that would be a good, that would be a, a fair question. I could, I could, so. But that's my question. Just the rename. Did we already? That, no, this is my question. If it's not, if, if we voted it down tonight, right? Voted what then? Can you continue and, and treat it as an elementary school? Already, called the middle that school? was already voted. That's the survey that. This is just the name. The, 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 the answer is yes. You can. You can. You can. You guys can call a, a middle school, right? And put the kids in there. However, you want to formulate the grades. So I think last week we were talking about not changing the name middle school because of the cost factor, um, but the fact of if you wanted to keep it middle school or upper elementary, it doesn't change the formulation of how you guys have decided. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Right. So there's We've no already, true need. There's no true need as far as education to change it. But the changes that you're talking about have already been approved. That's what I'm. That's why I guess it's confusing. No, me. the grade restructuring has. I don't think any of that has gone but, through curriculum committee. 
Has curriculum committee been told that we're changing a whole teaching model? And again, when, when the sixth graders are taught, like I said, the math teachers teach math, social studies teachers teach social studies. You're changing sixth grade, you're bringing sixth grade back into an elementary school model. Okay. That's a total so, transfer. No, no, but, but we've already, that my point to you is, I apologize if it's confusing, is that we have already made that decision. It's not confusing to me because it's a curriculum change. It's but a change, already, it's a change no, in no, no, our... No, 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 what I'm saying is we've already made it. Right now we're just, right now we're discussing whether or not we change the name. The reconfiguration has already been done. The presentations were done to the, the students, everything, okay, that's done. I, I can ask my questions and go to the cause. That's you can, fine. Absolutely. I wasn't trying to stop you from no, asking okay. questions. I just... I didn't, when you're saying if we vote it down tonight, it's I wanted you to yeah, To understand. me, though, it's, it's all connected because, you know, the only reason that I found out about the teaching model being changed is discussion about the name change. If I had, if, if I hadn't but brought But you were up, there, weren't you there when we voted? We've already voted for it. So we, we never, never voted talked about that. changing Hammerschold into an elementary school. Never. Okay. And if, again, based on data from seven years ago, if this is something that was needed for our kids, why would it sit on a shelf for seven years? Hi. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Right on me. I just I had a few things. I just wanted to. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Because like I, I said, him start, I missed one meeting in four years, and I feel like <laughs> that I. That was yeah. the one Vicky I'm telling. I, fe I fell I fell down the rabbit hole. So a few comments. Um, I, I do respectfully disagree that we were not informed about the curriculum because all of the um, questions you're asking, um, I feel that we were given the answers to in quite a few presentations and that helped us to make the decision to restructure to fifth and sixth grade. I also get to be in the unenviable position of being historian. And I can tell you that when I came on the board in 2000, the issue of the transition between elementary school and Hammerschild was a concern then and continued to be a concern over the years. Over the years, the board took many measures to address that to make it more comfortable. We actually, I can remember, um, before Joanne Magistro was superintendent, her chairing an ad hoc committee to discuss orientation mm -hmm. for the kids and um, also for the parents, for instance. And I was on that committee not just as a board member, but also as um, a parent. And we discussed ways that we could help ease the transition. We worked with the um, building administrators at Hammerschold to discuss ways to have a connection between the students. And we came up with a lot of uh, buddy programs, if you will. Mm -hmm. And there used to be a, a picnic uh, uh, or a lunch, an annual lunch held on the lawn at Hammerschold. And over the years, a lot of small things were built into our initiatives to help, because it is probably the toughest transition in the district. So just to, to let you know from my perspective, um, because I think that we need to, to help each other on talking about things that we're not aware of and we share things. Like you'll share things from your perspective on times when you worked at Hammerschild that I didn't know about. So I wanted to let you all know that this has been talked about and um, planned and initiatives came out of it for at least 22 years. Um, so I didn't feel in any of our discussions that we were changing to a complete elementary school model, but that instead the term I remember being used was we were going to preserve the fifth grade experience because parents were concerned that their children wouldn't have the fifth grade experience, that that was another year. Then, then there were things associated with it. And that's when we came up with the idea that um, the children wouldn't change classrooms, but the teachers would. Am I correct there, Dr. Valeski? and that that model was to preserve 
the sense of the element, and that all the things associated fifth grade traditionally that they would do in the elementary schools would still be replicated at Hammerschuld. And that the sixth grade experience would remain what we have as the sixth grade curriculum. And that we felt that there was a real benefit to the fifth graders being in that building because they would have exposure to all the electives that were offered and it would only enhance their education. I don't mean to go on and on about this. I just, I listened very carefully to everything you said, Mark, and I was taking notes. So I have a different perspective on it uh, that I felt that I do have an understanding that we were presented with examples of the curriculum and again, the model of preserving the fifth grade program in another building and preserving the sixth grade program. So that is what I wanted to say right now. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I'll Mrs. Reese. Speak and then I'll respond back to Mrs. Absolutely. Sure, Mrs. Reese, she's been so patient. Oh, no worries. Um, I definitely appreciate when a board member wants to hear more information. That makes sense. Um, you know, we can always ask for further detail. Uh, there's always opportunities. But from... But some of the things that I kind of struck me as maybe um, not not completely clear, uh, talking about transitions has been one of my key points for the last six years. Um, so has Lori Lax. Uh, it's been one, we've worked with Dr. Boley and Dr. Valeski very strongly. And, 22 and, years it's been an issue. Right, <laughs> so it's not, you know, I'm sure and many board members have been involved and many, many administrators through many years. Um, I think it came to a head because kids are growing up quicker than they used to be. I, and I think that um, fifth grade, uh, uh, you know, but then there was a concern and I could tell you, I know people who are concerned that their kids are going into Hammershaw. And they're just graduating fourth grade and they're fifth they're going into sixth. And this is a response partially to that as well. There is a social emotional component to it because you have fifth graders going into Hammershaw. And so the upper elementary provides a buffer for them, a transition period, because they would have been in an elementary situation. So that's that's number one. Number two, the idea that we've done nothing for seven years for transition. I, I have to say that's not entirely true. Uh, I've seen the administration take many efforts to do that from the social emotional side, from the administrative side. There have been uh, invites. I've seen the kids make from the smallest things, for example, making trifolds to invite the kids to the, to the, to the hammer show, to having invites to tour the lockers, to having them come down uh, the, the spring before and meet with the kids. I mean, I, I could be a pain in the butt. So I'm telling you, I asked about this a lot. And, and they, they always listen. And they've done a lot of work on this. And um, I also think that the our concept of an upper elementary, if you're not in education, it, like, I, like I said, you know, I, if it was a security matter, I would defer to you. I do have a, you know, a, a teaching background. There is a format for upper elementary. They're, they they do have them in the state. Uh, West Windsor has them. It's not we're not reinventing the wheel here in East Brunswick. Of course, we're a top-notch school system, but the concept of upper elementary is out there, and it does quite well because it is a transition. You're getting a higher level of skills taught in the academics, but you're also getting the buffer of being still in that, that kind of setting. Um, it doesn't concern me as much as, I hear what you're saying, you want more detail, I get it. But um, as a board, we're kind of advising. We're not, in, you know, remember we talked about being, a, you know, not in the weeds and trusting the professionals. And so I think part of that is we could ask for more presentation, more detail of how it's done. <coughs> But I trust when they tell me that the fifth grade is going to be a certain way and the sixth grade is going to be a certain way, that they're going to present to us, you know, that information. Maybe it wasn't as quick as you would have liked or maybe it wasn't at the right time or what have you, but I do trust them that they're going to do it. 
you know. And then the other thing that got me confused is, in old years, we had a survey, right? So we wanted to have a survey, and it was a request to have a survey, and that's fine. So now we have the survey, and people vote this way, and then we say, okay, no survey. Now let's not call it that name, because the people voted. We don't like how the people voted, so we're going to do, uh, so why do we have a survey? You know, so it's just, if people said they like the name Upper Elementary, uh, what, I'm not making myself clear, Lori's looking at me. I, no, 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 I just got what you're saying. That you're, you're asking if we took the survey and Mark is saying that we don't use that. Right. And we're not, I I'm got it. I'm confused, right? We, we listened I, now to I your get suggestion it. was to get a survey. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. We got a survey. The people said 52 was to, 52 to 47 or whatever it was. I mean, you know, so they, they won, right? We may not be happy that it won. But it won. I, I don't, to me, either way, it's fine. But then to say, okay, well, we, I asked for a survey, but now I don't like the results of the survey, so let's not, let's not count the survey, right? So that doesn't seem listening to the people, right? So there, there's, you know, that's, that's the, the part of that. And then, um, it says about that, the teachers, I'm sorry, so let me just make sure I, I cover, because you, you said a lot of stuff. Oh, oh yeah. Just, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I have stuff. more. <laughs> um, and and just also about transition, we've been doing as a as a district at Churchill as well. I mean that's <clears> another <throat> big transition. That's another big jump. And I can tell you that this district is it, it, it's in their planning. Even though you may not have felt it in the in the explanation, it's baked in. That's a very big priority is transition from the different schools because if they cannot operate in that school, I'll tell you, there are a lot of parents that are concerned about the transition from fourth to fifth. And if, and if we can make that transition a little bit easier, and like you said, during COVID, why wouldn't we do that? And, that's not, and also a lot of teachers are, and I could be wrong, aren't they licensed K to six? So we would have to obviously work with them, but Aren't they licensed K to six? Yes, they're. I taught they're math elementary. in sixth grade. I'm not saying it's easy. We have to train them, and there has to be working with the teachers, of course, and whatever they feel comfortable with. But a sixth grade teacher, when you have a K to six license, am, am I right? I'm, I could be out of date, but you, right, you you teach other grades, uh, <laughs> other subjects. You can't always. I mean, optimally, it would be great just math. But if you do like a math science pairing. That's a perfect match because it's interdisciplinary, and a lot of science, a lot of science has a lot of math in it, and they can, you know, bring it together. So that was the, the other point. But again, no one. I think you made up a lot of good points, and you, you co you're coming from a good place. You're concerned about the kids. You you've been at Habershall for many years. I respect your opinion, but I think that sometimes. We don't see the forest through the trees. We're very focused on the name. With all the things going on in the world, is it really that important what the name, upper elementary, middle school, how about the, 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 that we just focus on making it the best education possible for the kids? And if there's a different way to approach it, then we should listen to your approach 100%. But to spend 30 minutes talking about the upper elementary, and, and it's like tomato, tomato. Right? I'm from Brooklyn originally, so for me... I hadn't noticed. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get to the, beat, the, the heart of the matter. I, I hear your concerns and they're valid, but maybe the name is not the issue. have other issues besides the name, you know? That's my... That's my Thank you, Barbara. Mr. Winston looks very serious. No, I, I'm, I'm always serious here, Lori, yes. because these are important issues where it involves the district. Yes. Jeff, so uh, first off, uh, my first point, seven-year-old data, um, it's no longer valid. Half the kids in the district who were part of that data are now in college or beyond. Um, I, I don't agree with the weight that you've put on that. However, that doesn't dismantle everything. Um, in response to something President Lack said, we did vote on the structural change. I, I, you know, I'm sitting here thinking like, well, what would be the metaphor of what just happened here? It would be as if you put something up on Facebook, everybody answered, then you change the comment and they look dumb. That's the example. You don't understand it? You understand what I just said? You look confused for a second. If I were to write, what a wonderful day, everybody said I agree, and then you change that comment to be, I hate Victor. 
All right, and everybody agreed. That's what you just did. You 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 moved the goalpost on this issue. We voted for a structural change based on capacity. That was the thrust of the of, of the vote. That's what we voted on. And to say to Mr. Sismar three times during his presentation, but we voted on structural. You know what? If we voted on structural, then don't change a thing. Because you're right, President Lax. We did vote on structural. We did no, not vote on curriculum alteration. If you believe that we did, I challenge you to produce the minutes. You'll be looking for a long time. I will be looking. Uh, so, and, but and, we did and, have and, a and discussion, much, me, Jeff. Much as, what you, discussion do you believe we had, President Luft? We had a discussion about the needs of the district. We had, we had presentations. Be I don't know if he was he Maybe maybe Mr. Sismar well, missed them. Well, but Ms. Beckham was here, and point, she just repeated it all back. To Did you listen point, to what she said? Yes, Jeff, I also listen. <laughs> I understand that you would like to try and create a zoo, but the reality is... Excuse me? Oh, hold on. Excuse me, Ms. Lux. I like to create a zoo. I, if you make one more Jeff, personal comment about me as being a participant in this meeting, you are I understand being you have issues. No, you, you are, are being disruptive. Watch what you what say to me, Ms. What I am Lux. saying is that I mentioned to Mr. Sismar that we... Well, that's my feeling, You're Jeff. You're the zookeeper then, Ms. That's, I am the zookeeper, and zoo. I'm doing my best. But I'm saying to you right now <laughs> yeah. that we had discussed this to the point that the orientations were done at the schools. And all I said to Mr. Sismar is, while his points are well taken, and, and Mrs. Becker said it as well, and I understand his concerns, we were supposed to be voting on a name change right now. That the time for him to bring up these concerns would have been previously. Because this was done. He said tonight, well, if the nine of us decide not to do it, are we not doing it? Right, I'll reclaim That's my time right now. Thank you very much for You're that. very welcome. All right, so seven years ago, a lot's changed since then. Uh, capacity was less of an issue seven years ago. COVID didn't happen, and people liked Will Smith. So a lot, is, a lot has transpired since those days. So I really appreciate the old data, but I really don't find its validity. As far as the survey goes, uh, in answer to Ms. Uh, Ms. Reese's comments, yes, the public did vote 42-47. I agree with that. And I, as an example, locally, I would say two-thirds of this township voted on having retail growing and distribution of marijuana. But what the responsible town council did is put the brakes on it in spite of a two-to-one margin. And we don't have that because they wanted more data. That is the responsible uh, the responsible. Uh, things that a council or a board can do. So while I appreciate your comment that the public did vote, especially on a razor thin margin like that, um, I, I think the topic is still open to discussion. And uh, lastly, I will ask you yet one more time to watch your tone with me when you talk about, I tried to make it anything. I don't appreciate it, it's uncalled for, and it's below the office in which you're supposedly holding. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you for your opinion, Jeff. No, thank you for actually, don't speak to me that way, Ms. Hawks. Yes, Jeff, I will be very careful in the way I speak to you because you're the only one that can be disrespectful up here. Is there anyone else? Mrs. Becker, uh, Mr. Sismar, you want to duke it out? Yeah, I was just going to uh, com comment on somebody. You can, you can talk, of course, later. Okay. Um, <laughs> the gentleman. Oh, put on my thing again. Again, um, I will never miss a meeting again, I promise. <laughs> 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 um, I, again, I'm, I'm not quite sure. So, of course, we should always ask questions about everything, even things mm -hmm. we voted on. But I, I seem to have an understanding, um, and Barbara indicated she did too, and Lori, of, um, of curriculum and the way the model of the programs were going to be as part of our discussion that led us to vote on the five to six. So I'm, there seems to be a disconnect where some people didn't get it. So perhaps we can revisit for the education of the board because it is important that we all understand the nuances of the models and the programs. But I, when I looked at this agenda, um, and I called um, Lori and Dr. Valeski to just fill me in because I, I wasn't at the meeting, it was my understanding that the issue is what we were going to call this. And I wasn't even sure why it, that had become an issue because I remember a conversation 
prior to the meeting I missed where we had discussed because I remember um, uh, Dr. Valeski saying something about East Brunswick Upper Elementary School mm -hmm. and I said no it has to be Hammerschold Upper yeah. Elementary School and again that we talked about um, the other schools in the other school districts in the state that are have buildings called upper elementary schools. The ones that were mentioned tonight, I know Montgomery does, I think Montclair does, mm -hmm. um, Westfield. So um, I'm not even sure why there was a discussion about it. Like I said, I'll never miss a meeting again, I promise. <laughs> um, but I do agree with something that Barbara said. Um, well, I agree with a lot of what Barbara said. It's a name. And I'm not saying names aren't important. Names are always important. But a name is like a title. It doesn't tell the story. <clears throat> what goes on in that building isn't defined by the name. It's defined by exactly what Barbara said. Our goal is to provide the best educational experience we can. And it has been, I feel, thoroughly explored and vetted but we will continue to do that. And I hope that as new developments occur with curriculum and new ideas and initiatives, you continue to bring them to us. But it's a name. It's what goes on in that building to me that's crucial and what we call it is not going to take away from that, whether it's an upper middle elementary school or a middle school. Thank you. I'll try and be quick, <laughs> just to respond to some of the things you said. Um, yeah, the, I, I think one of your points, Vicki, when you talked about it, you said, you know, you're, you're kind of okay with the fifth grade experience being kept the same, but you, correct me if I'm wrong, you thought the sixth graders were still going to be treated as sixth graders middle schoolers, correct? Was that, was that part of what you said? I felt that the sixth grade curriculum was right. being preserved. Right. So... And again, not, not taking your words and twisting them, but no, you don't. I mean, that adds to my point that you're much more educated than I am in what's been going on for the past 20 years. I was surprised because, it, you know, it, it, in the face, it was just a name change. But then a few questions were asked and a couple of things were said. And all of a sudden, you know, comments were coming that they're going to walk sixth graders lunchroom, this and that. I'm like, wait a minute. It, it like clicked in my head. We're not helping the fifth graders transition into a different school. We're... If, in, in a symbolic sense, taking sixth graders and putting them back into an elementary school model. That's where all of this comes from with my questions. We were never given that information. It was a surprise last meeting. Um, a couple more comments. Uh, something was said across the day. I didn't say we haven't done anything to help the kids transition. Like I said, I was there for five years. I loved the way they did orientation. They brought in uh, two schools at a time, half were in the cafeteria, half were in the pack. You're welcome. They learned how to open their lockers. <laughs> no, that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I said I had faith in our fifth graders coming into there. And, and you know, for a week or two, the, the beauty of Hammerschold was they were all in the same boat. Was it stressful? Absolutely. But all our, all our you know, and the, I was there when the sixth graders come in, but I could see with our fifth graders, they were all in the same boat. They, they helped each other. They had other student ambassadors and stuff help each other. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, the reason I brought up the social and emotional issues that was never, to me, never brought up in the past, because if we had put the fifth, sixth, and seventh graders together in Churchill School and moved the eighth and ninth graders to Hammerschold, that throws that argument out the window. So this is a lot of the things that I was surprised by in the last meeting. It was a name change, and it's like, well, wait a minute. Why are we changing the name? And all these other issues came up. Um, since we were doing resumes, you know, yeah, I have a security background, but I also have a, a master's in educational background, so I can, I can speak to some of these things with, with some level of expertise. Um, and yeah, I mean, we all care about the kids. The slim margin, I, didn't, I don't think, I, I respect what 52% what said, but 40, almost 48% said, keep it the way it is. And again, a name's a name. What is it? A rose by an other name with smell is sweet. Let's throw some Shakespeare out there. But um, so again, we, you know, unless anybody else said anything, say, I'm okay with moving on with the name. I'm going to have a lot of questions over the next. I don't, I don't like being a board member and being surprised about changing a whole model of a school 
and not getting the information. Um, curriculum, you know, like I said, I, I don't want to run the schools. I don't want to run the things. But we were totally off, caught off guard that we were going to now, like I said, symbolically take our sixth graders and put them back into elementary school. That was the main thrust behind my questions, my concerns. Never that our staff isn't competent, never that our administration isn't competent. We shouldn't be surprised up here. You know, when something's on the agenda for a name change, that was the last piece of a puzzle. And then for somebody to say, well, we're, and I'm not picking on you, Lord. You know, we already voted on a grade restructuring. It was never mentioned. And I've been here over four years. It's never, you know, all these other pieces. So that's why I brought all this stuff up. I'm okay, I don't have any more questions, and we can continue on, uh, and anybody else can comment, but that was the impetus behind me bringing up all this. I don't like to be surprised with changing a whole school, and we were never told. So, thank you. Can we get him the presentation that you had given to us? Because I, I we did have a presentation on it. So, I, From like, you're, what, five, six years ago? No, 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 very <laughs> recently. So, so Dr. Boley can get you that, because maybe you missed a meeting. I, I'm, Is that possible? <laughs> Yeah, but we, so I would like to get you the information that you're requesting. Those are fair points. And I, I'm going to see if I can get the transcript from the community forum I did uh, during the pandemic. Okay. Because that was a full night of discussion about this whole transition. Right. Yeah. And one last thing, Mark. I, um, I, it was, I was never under the impression that um, we were putting sixth grade back into the um, middle school. So uh, into school the elementary model. school model. But that's, yeah, that's what right. it seemed to be. Right, so obviously meeting. there's, there's um, misconceptions here and there's not clarity. And board members shouldn't be surprised, but I, as a board member, was not surprised by any of this because I felt that we had been informed by the recent presentations, by that forum, and I never was under the impression that sixth grade was going back to an elementary model. So it's, we have, um, we're coming from two different places, which is why I don't understand, I didn't understand why this discussion was happening tonight. Mm -hmm. That's it. Anyone else have any? No? Mr. Secretary, I believe we are ready to call the roll. Mrs. Becker. Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Chu. Yes. Mr. Sismar. Uh, no. Mrs. Guas. Yes. Mr. Hong. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. Mr. Winston. No. Mrs. Lax. Yes. Motion carries. Um, so, um, going on to our committee reports, information items, and for the good of course for the board. I'm actually going to start off, if that's okay. Um, the education foundation. It was really nice to be back um, after a couple of years hiatus. It was beautiful to see the smiling faces. Some um, old friends came back to the district. Um, and Libu and I were actually treated to a very different side of Dr. Valeski. I will leave it at that. Um, oh, no. Please don't. <laughs> well, I will just say his remarks may have had to be bleeped at one point. So... Um, but it was really, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know some confused faces. I know. Well, we'll, we'll have some fun with that. But, um, yes, we had, um, we had a lot of good, uh, good friends back in our district. It was nice to see Sam Mattis. I know you have a relationship with him. We had Zoom for Sam Mattis and for Dr. Gottlieb, who were both inducted into the Hall of Fame, but they were able to be at the high school earlier. Um, and I can say that I graduated close to one of them, not the other. Um, so that was kind of a special treat. And the four inductees were thrilled. Their families were thrilled. And as usual, the Education Foundation did a wonderful, wonderful job. And I did make one promise. So before I pass it along, I have to give a shout out to my friend Joseph. If you will look above Barbara and Jeff's head up there uh, in the pink, there was a young man when I came in tonight from Balmon Road. Joseph was taking pictures with his parents of his artwork. And he was such a good friend. He went around to see all of his friends' artwork as well to bring back um, the tidings to Balm that he was here. So, um, hi, Joseph. You did a great job. So, um, with that, are there any other? Would you like to? Yes, go ahead. I just wanted to say that um, during Dr. Valeski's report, because I do listen to you. Um, Still do listen to you. 
I was struck again, and, and I, I, I should never be surprised about this. I guess I was um, awestruck again by the, the bandwidth of the achievements of our students. And when you think about the fact that we just went through a, a, a pandemic that disrupted everyone's world, particularly our students, our staff, our coaches, and yet our children, our, our teachers, our administrators, whether you are our coach, um, an advisor to a, a, a competitive team like the math team, um, one of the arts, we're thriving. I am so proud, particularly of our students, who just kept going, and the staff behind them all the way, supporting them, resulting in continued accolades. It's really kind of amazing if you think about it, and really quite wonderful. And it is. Mrs. Becker, if I could, because I want to put this in context with what you just said, and I'm not going to take long, but um, this performance, the performances we put up there, is a snapshot of what we do in the district. Um, and so much of what is accomplished up there is a result of the actions of this elected body. You made decisions early on, in before we even had a pandemic, that really set us up for success in terms of technology, infrastructure, all those things. And our teachers had to pivot and our parents had to pivot and I give them huge credit for what they had to accomplish. But as we've come back, even in spite of these accomplishments, you take those accomplishments and then you add the burden that uh, what the transitions have uh, put on all of the staff, all of the community, all of the students in school, out of school, hybrid, uh, we did the best we could under the circumstances, but they have impacts in people, oh, on, sure. on people all along the way. And yet, in spite of those, um, our staff, our teachers, our support staff, our administrators have taken that role on in addition to making sure that our students still succeed academically. So when you talked about bandwidth, I feel like everyone's bandwidth has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and wider. Um, and I give everybody so much credit uh, for what we've accomplished because I... It's a phenomenal team all around, and it's just, um, you know, we have to realize that we work together as a team, and there are a lot of moving pieces, but I, I appreciate the accolades. But there's just so much more that goes on behind the scenes, behind uh, uh, those accomplishments, and the supports that our teachers and administrators give uh, that makes a much bigger picture than what that presents. But. And I didn't, um, thank you, Dr. Valeski, and I didn't mean to suggest for one minute that we, that there aren't ramifications oh, and, yeah, and just, issues that we are going to be dealing with and yeah. our students and staff are. You can't go through something like um, going to remote for, what was it, a year and a half? Almost two years and not have ramifications and we'll be dealing with the outcome. There are children who are going, who need and will continue to need um, remedy will continue to need extra support academically, emotionally, and socially. Teachers who continue to need our support to give them that professional development and experience to continue to cope with the challenges, that's the fallout of this whole thing. But it just struck me as I was listening to the accolades at the beginning and you know what? It goes for every, every student in our district, even if they're not up there on the screen. Um, and every staff member you hung in there, you came through. We're not completely on the other side yet, but we're still here and we're thriving against great challenges and odds and all the challenges we have. We're still here. Thank you. Leave so I just want to make a few comments about EBEF and the pie dinner. So each time when I 
thought about EVF, I kept asking why Jack and his team are doing this job. I kept asking myself. Apparently, everything they did is not for themselves. For whom? It's for our East Bronx children. You know, we as a district, we just cannot find every new idea for those teachers. They are very creative, but we don't not have enough resources to fund in them. But Jack and his team jumped in, fixed the last piece of the puzzle for this education system, gave out this very precious resource so that the teachers can try out their new ideas. And maybe one of the projects can open at least one student's door to their future. So you know, I, I, I realized that, OK, East Brunswick, why East Brunswick is so special? I believe because so many people are volunteering uh, for, our, for the best benefit of our children, exempted by Jack Levin. So I kept, I kept uh, challenging myself. Since I first met Jack, I challenged myself every year. I got to raise some money for him. So not just more money, I tried to raise a significant amount of money for him. Because this, I believe, I'm obligated to do so. It's not for me, you know. It's not for Jack. Okay. It's for our every single children in East Brunswick. So I really, really appreciate whatever the Jack doing. And each time we invite those alumni back to our school, our students are very excited because they know what kind of impact to this country, to this society they can make in future. So that will inspire our students a lot. So I really appreciate uh, Jack and his team and those groups of volunteers are uh, doing everything they can to help us, help our children. Thank you, Jack, and your team. I hope you can hear it. And you're being very modest because there was actually, when you say that you do what you can, there was actually a nice donation that was made in your honor that evening. Well, I, I, my friend, each time I call them, they say, okay, I, can, I know what you're doing. I trust you. I can cut a check. Mm -hmm but I don't want my name there, but I want to help you. I said, no, I don't need to, but EVEF keeps putting my name there. So, so each time deserved. the money I donate is much less than my friend donate. Yeah. You brought it in for the district. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. You guys have uh, on this end? Yeah. Heather? Yeah. Help. Oh. Oh. Yes, we get it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say as a comment, uh, following <coughs> up on Dr. Valeski's report, that uh, we were at NHS, and the part that was interesting about NHS for me was the energy of the parents. I mean, for us, it's parents that we've known since our kids were over at Corpus Christi while Memorial mm -hmm. was being rebuilt. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but the number of kids, our students that I saw moving from the athletic fields to the high school for NHS you know, speaks of our commitment mm -hmm. to athletics and academics. Um, but I find myself now, I think I see more of Frank Malta than I see of most of my family. I'm just forever, at, I have two children playing lacrosse at the same time, so we're there all the time. And I was saying to somebody that I spent a lot of time during my day going Hammershill, Churchill, the high school, and back and forth, and they were like, oh, it'll pass. And I'm like, it's glorious, it's so good to be in all those places. And I'm noticing as I take pictures that the number of parents in the stands is greater than it was before the pandemic for sports. The number of parents just standing around watching their kids practice mm -hmm. seems to be greater. Um, the parents congregating to talk with each other about the school seems to be greater. There's just more of a vitality. I, I was the same experience over at Churchill the other day. There's just more people that are so happy to be these hubs of our community. And I think that I had been out of touch before the pandemic about how much the schools really are a community center until we didn't have the buildings open. Mm -hmm. And now to see everybody back is absolutely just amazing. And you can just feel the joy in it. I'm, the boys lacrosse team went together, they're gathered through the booster, not through the team, but went to see a Rutgers men's lacrosse game. And the number of families that came out in horrifying weather to do that over the weekend, and coaches that came out to do it as well. 
I just think that our students want to be together, the adults want to be together, and the community is just thriving back in the buildings. It's just beautiful to see. It was also nice to see the turf going down the hill on the truck. <laughs> The old turf. Things. The old turf. Yeah, the old turf. I saw it going. Okay. Yeah? Oh, go ahead. Sorry, mine's not as happy. Um, I, I have a pretty strong opinion on the following. Um, I, don't, I don't care that I'm sharing my personal information with the public. Uh, I contracted COVID uh, recently, last month. You know, when you... When you do contact tracing after you contract COVID, you, you, you start to think it's kind of like being a detective. You take all the available information uh, that you get and you get a, a possible conclusion. And it can only be a possible conclusion because there's HIPAA, there's all kinds of other things that go on. And, you know, I didn't want to take it to a point, but there, but there is things to be said. Um, I won't release details about what I learned because I don't potentially want to release any confidential information to the public as had been done in the past, nor will I share potentially confidential information with any other elected officials that are not part of this board. You know, my conclusion, my opinion, is that I contracted it at the last meeting on March 17th. I'm not gonna say whether or not others at the meeting had COVID and passed it on to me or others. It's not something I'm an expert in. I would not falsely accuse an individual without any more facts, but I can say the following. We have policies, and our COVID policies are very serious, and it should apply equally to all persons on district property, especially board members. We all took an oath. We we're supposed to follow laws, policies, rules, guidelines, and safety should always be our number one priority. When a board member violates a policy that we have, one of which is attending a meeting or attending a, a district building displaying several signs of illness, which include sneezing, coughing, runny nose, etc. I always believe that some type of action should have been taken. It's probably a situation that never should have happened. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I guess, because there's other people around here that know what I'm talking about, um, and there probably will be no action taken on that policy violation. And I'm okay with that for now. Um, but I would say, and I don't mean to sound snippy, but if we're going to have policies that aren't followed by board members without consequence, then maybe we could have a presentation as to which policies should be adhered to, which policies are enforceable. And I know I'm being general when I speak because I don't want to embarrass any particular individual. And that's, that's why I say it in this manner. So for your families, be careful out there. Um, live your lives. Obviously, we're opening up again. But I would, I would just say be careful. Thank you. Anyone else? Mrs. Reese. Yeah, I just was going to compliment. Um, it's on another subject we had a Zoom, uh, which is uh, about we were just kind of piggybacking on mental health and uh, helping the kids. Uh, I mean, this is from Effective School Solutions. It was pretty recently, and it was called the Trauma Tune Model. And uh, it talked about parents, how to handle uh, issues coming out of COVID, just going back to school, getting reacclimated, and uh, dealing with issues related to stress and trauma. And I thought that they did a really nice job. There were a bunch of parents on the line. It was very well attended and um, gave the parents some strategies also about, you know, reaching out to their kids, handling issues with their kids, being able to talk to them, open up about certain issues. So I want to thank the administration for having uh, that kind of program. And I think Effective uh, School Solutions is doing a fine job. Uh, with these issues and in supplementation, of course, our counseling department is excellent and they were on the call as well, uh, you know, helping with all this. I have to say, even from a personal experience, there are groups and so forth. We reach out to the kids from the counseling department. Uh, we had a loss in the family and they reached out right away. Uh, the counselors are wonderful. Uh, they really do um, walk the walk, talk the talk, and it's been a tough time for them to handle all these issues. 
And I look forward to more of the topics from Effective School Solutions because they have other topics that they cover as well. And especially in the turbulent times that, that, that we have, they are giving the parents the language to speak to their kids about some of these issues. Sometimes they're tough issues, and some of them may be about uh, accepting others with differences. I know we have some other uh, uh, programs that are coming up, and I encourage parents to look in the emails because the, the resources are there, and we're, pro you know, the district is providing those resources. So thank you to everyone who, who's doing that good work. Thank you. Well, we do have a need for closed session, whereas the Board of Education must discuss matters which are not appropriate for discussion in a public meeting, and these subjects are within the exceptions to the Open Public Meetings Act and are permitted to be discussed in closed session, whereas the Board of Education intends to discuss matters as follows, those items listed on tonight's agenda. The length of closed session is estimated to be one hour, after which the public meeting of the Board shall reconvene and action may be taken. May I please have a motion to go into closed session? Motion by Mr. Sismar, second by Mrs. Becker. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? If you don't mind, we could stay right in here. It'll be very quick, and then we can set up for the hearing right after this, if that's okay. You're preempting me. I'm sorry. We I'm are sorry. closed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming out. Have a good night. Get home safe in the rain. I just didn't want people to reset in there. That's yeah, all. I'm sorry.